Hello and welcome to the Par 3 presented by thelines.com. Matt Brown, Steven Anders coming to you. The playoffs are here. The best 70 golfers on the PGA Tour head to Tennessee. We get the FedEx St. Jude and this is a no-cut event. Steven, the top 50 move on to next week and it is a course that if you listen to what the players have to say about it, that have played it, and by the way, lots of stickiness here, at least from a statistical standpoint on this course, because we've been playing tournaments here since the late 80s. So um, there's at least a lot that we do know about TPC Southwind. And what you hear all over and over and over again is this time of year, that rough, it grows out, it gets sticky, it gets thick, it gets tough to play out of and be able to control your shot. And so... Even guys like Rory, who are bombers, say like, hey, man, I'm really putting an emphasis on trying to keep it in the fairway this week because I don't want to get into that nasty rough and then not know where my second shot is going to be coming out of that stuff. 100%. And also a smaller field for the first round of the playoffs than we've seen in recent years. Part of the effects of changing formats and guys leaving for live. So... Uh, sorry, Keith Mitchell, number 77 in the rankings. Mm-hmm. You don't make the playoffs this year. Sorry, yeah, Charlie guess what? Hoffman. We get to quit wasting money on Keith Mitchell, actually. Thank God. <laughs> actually, thank God Keith Mitchell didn't make it. Like, that guy's cost me more money than any golfer on planet Earth. So, you know what? Thank God he didn't make it. Yeah, he probably would have been top five of the model again in this yeah. field. Again. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, thank you for taking that <laughs> option out of our hands here, Keith. But also, hope you play better next year in your cat sweater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I do want to like I do want at least before, you know, typically, guys, we would just get right into our picks. But I, I do want to like look at the odds board a little bit, Stephen, just kind of get your thoughts here and then we'll get into to where we're at. Guys, no shock. Scotty Scheffler's plus 330 to win this thing. Yeah, I know he's he's one of 70, but he is plus 330 to win it all. Xander seven to one. Rory nine to one. Colin Moore Cow is at 12 to one. Then a pretty big leap from there. Uh, Can't lay about 20. Uh, Oberg about 20. Matsuyama about 25-ish, something like that. Fleetwood kind of in that range as well. Then you get into the 30s where you see Connors and Hovland, Tom Kim, Russell Henley, Justin Thomas and Tony Finau in that mid-30s along with Sung J.M. Uh, you, you start to look at this. It feels like we hadn't seen some of these guys in quite a while, and the reason is is because we haven't because with the, between the Olympics and then this kind of buffer event here, it's been a few weeks since we've seen some of these guys, Stephen, so we kind of have to go off of, of what we saw last, even though who knows what improvements they've been able to make over the last three weeks. Definitely, and I think to me that means if you're looking at more of the top of the board here, you got to take a bigger picture approach as opposed to like last 24 rounds. I, I might want to look at last 36 rounds for some of the guys near the top and just assume that we're going to get, you know, peak performance, best effort in a playoff event, uh, bigger purse. Some of these guys might need to actually have a good week this week to get to the next round uh, where it's top 50 make it. So uh, I'm kind of taking more of a big picture approach here and not trying to get sucked in by maybe if a guy's in a slump in the past two weeks here with when it comes to the guys closer to the top of the board. If you're looking at long shots, then yeah, I, I would prefer a guy who's in good form coming in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Absolutely. So uh, real quick, guys, just stuff that I looked at since these guys are, you know, they're saying it with their own with with their own voice that it's they're going to put emphasis on keeping it in the in the fairway. Good drive percentage, total driving, which combines distance and accuracy. Uh, Certainly, if that's the case, too, Stephen, if they're keeping it in the in the fairway, then, hey, who's the most accurate with that second shot? So a lot of a, a lot of approach stuff. I did a mixed condition model for this one. So like you said, I went a little further out at 36, but then I also splashed in 24 and 12 all into the same model to get the results that I got this week. So I'm trying to get the well-rounded dude who not only has been doing it for a long time, but also is coming in in good form as well. And and listen, there's going to be some scoring opportunities on some of these holes. And so, so long as you keep it in the fairway and you can approach, well, I, I want to, I got some opportunities gained in there, some birdie or better percentage as well, just to see what's going on with all of that. But uh, that's kind of where I, I sat this week as far as the stats that matter to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on all that. Uh, I very similar to what John Hasselbauer posted in his, in his weekly uh, preview on the lines.com. And for me, I think the biggest thing is I'm pretty freaking terrified of Scotty and Xander in a playoff event in a smaller field. Two guys have won three of the four majors this year have won double digit times on the tour this year. Like I'm, 
they're the deserving favorites. I can't really poke a hole in either of them. So once we get on the tee box here, Matt, I'm going to have to try and get creative, I think. Well, go ahead and uh, get us going because some of mine are, are fairly boring. But, hey, listen, uh, I am okay with being boring this week because I just want to make some money. So uh, go ahead and kick us off here and see if you can start things a little bit uh, more interesting than I will. All right, so the first guy that I bet this week is one who is about 20 to 1 across the board in the normal outright market. But I was able to find 16 to 1 at FanDuel in the winner without Scotty, Xander, and Rory market. <laughs> so, like, only a four-point difference there in the odds, and I take out the two guys I'm terrified of. Yeah. And I got that price, 16 to 1, on Ludwig Oberg. Mm -hmm. So, I certainly understand that he is a guy that we think of with how good of a driver of the golf ball he is, and you've talked about needing to stay in the fairways. But over the past 36 rounds, he ranks 13th in fairways gained. He's not just one of the longest hitters. He's one of the straightest hitters, too. To me, he's kind of like the next Rory McIlroy in terms of being able to use his driver as a weapon in total driving. So if I get a guy like that on a shorter course and he's having wedges in his hand when other guys might be playing safer off the tee and having middle irons in his hand, and I can take the big three out of the mix... Well, now, theoretically, Oberg coming third in this tournament, and I still cash an outright. Mm -hmm. So I, that's where I started my card. When I looked at the last 36 rounds, he ranked fifth for me. He's green across the board, which really there's only two guys that I can say that about in terms of ones that were ranked top 10 over the past 36 rounds for me. The other was Scotty Scheffler, and the third was Tommy Fleetwood, actually, which makes sense on a positional course, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we just saw it at the Olympics as well, was right there trying to win the gold medal on a positional course at Lake Golf National. So, um, yeah, I, I just landed on Oberg, and I think he's next. I think at some point the lid's going to come off, and he's going to rack up a bunch of wins. And he may not even need to win this week for me to cash yep. this bet. Fourth overall in my model for him uh, this week. Third overall in this field over the last 36 rounds in total driving. So, again, as we're talking about total driving, guys, is distance and accuracy combined. So it's not just long, it's accurate as well, and he's third overall in this field in that statistical category. The only reason he wasn't green across the board for me was I did put in a little bit of around the green where we know we saw that like really, really uh, come to fruition when he was leading that tournament here a, a few weeks ago and just couldn't get it done around the greens when he wasn't hitting them. But that being said, still even with that, He's still fourth overall in the model for me. So really like Ludwig this week. And like you said, I, I truly believe he's going to win a bunch of tournaments coming up. So I said I was going to be boring. And how about this for boring, Stephen? Uh, I'll just use DraftKings as an example. Of course, you can go mess around with this in your book of choice. If they allow placement market parlays and be sure that ties count, right? That ties included. DraftKings has moved away from uh, dead heating over there, Stephen. Um, so it's worth pointing out to our listeners out there, DraftKings is doing including ties now. And you can parlay Scotty and Xander top 10, and you get plus money on it. Granted, it's just a little bit of plus money. It's plus 107. But it is a 70-person field, and it's top 10 including ties. And I'm parlaying Xander Schauffele and Scotty Scheffler in a course that can be had so long as you can hit fairways, and both of those guys do that pretty damn well and so for me it's very boring I get it I understand that it's not something that you're going to make a ton of money off of but we're just trying to make a profit here whenever we're betting golf golf betting is hard and so if you can take the two best golfers in the world and parlay them to finish top 10 including ties in a 70 player field and I might go out and say this Stephen, and I, I mean this is no disrespect to some of these guys that are out there right but you know Am I really worried about some of these other guys winning this tournament and like really competing to win this tournament, right? Like, would it surprise me if Adam Hadwin or Patrick Rogers or Nick Taylor or Emiliano Grillo like finished inside the top 30? No, but inside the top 10, probably, you know? And so I'm starting to look at some of the field, Brendan Todd and, you know, like all these guys that, yes, they're fine golfers, Mark Hubbard and Seamus Power and stuff like that. They're fine golfers, but are they going to finish inside the top 10? So like it's a 70 person field. 
it's probably more like a 55 person field, you know, when it's all said and done that I got to get it, these two guys into the top 10. And so give me some plus money. And like I said, you can maybe mess around at your book of choice, make sure they allow you to parlay the, the fitting positions, make sure you're getting ties paid in full, but um, you're going to get plus money one way or another. If you, if you have the best two golfers in the world to finish in the top 10. Yeah. Don't mind it. Don't mind it at all. Uh, I'm going to go down the board here for a long shot. But I'm going back into the winner without market in the top okay. three. So uh, winner without Scotty, winner without Xander, winner without Rory. And I can get Cam Davis at 80 to 1, despite being in the, in the winner without market at mm-hmm. FanDuel. And granted, he uh, less confident after the miscut at the Wyndham last week. That yeah. kind of shot a hole in my theory here. But before that, 4.4 on approach, 1.6 on approach, 3.6 on approach. 1.3 off the tee, 2.6 off the tee, 3.2 off the tee. That's a, a win at the Rocket Mortgage, 26th at the Scottish Open, 19th at the 3M Open. And he lost strokes putting in two of those events. When he gained strokes putting, he won the event. So he's leveling up here. It's a much more difficult field, at least in terms of the top of the field. But it seems he's figured something out with accuracy in his driver. He's always had distance, but it seems like he may have figured something out with accuracy. If we go really short term here, like last 12 Mm -hmm. rounds, last 16 rounds, he's top 10 in fairways gained. So it's not just good drives gained where he's in less penal rough and can still get there in regulation on the greens. I'm, I'm looking at fairways gained and he's top 10 in this field. Combine that with, number seven in this field over the past 12 rounds and strokes gain on approach. I, I think we have a live long shot here with Cam Davis, a guy who has win equity on the PGA tour. Um, he has two career wins. Granted, they're both at the rocket mortgage, but he also has three top threes. He's got several top tens, long list of top tens in his PGA mm-hmm. tour career. Um, and again, we don't need him to actually win this tournament. If we're going to the winner without yeah. market. So my next one, again, nothing sexy, but how about this, uh, Stephen, which is just, I think, a little bit disrespectful in a field of 70 players. You're getting plus money for Tony Finau to finish in the top 20, and that includes ties. So you are getting plus 105 on Tony Finau to finish inside the top 20, including ties. Now, if you go in and you start with Tony Finau, what he's been doing Since the, let's just go ahead and start with the PGA in May. T18, T17, T8, T3, T5. Now, he did get cut at the Open, but the Open is nothing like what we're going to see this week, like, at all. People get cut at the Open. It's just a different type of golf. Comes back at the 3M T12. So, if we're starting at the PGA in May, Stephen, when was, you know, let's go ahead and, again, remove the Open where he got cut, and it's just completely different, so I'm I'm not even factoring that in. He's been inside that top 20 in every single tournament across the board for all of that. And we're getting plus money still. We're not having to lay on this at all. So uh, Tony Finau, top 20 at plus 105. You might can find even a better number out there. Just remember, we want, we're always playing ties, play, play in full uh, with all of this. But Finau getting totally disrespected here. We love the approach game for him. He's gained in seven straight on approach. That's some of the stuff that we're looking at here. Gains in uh, strokes gain total. In every game, in every tournament, except for that tournament in which he got cut over at the Open, which again I'm throwing out with all of that. His short game has gotten much better. He's in the green in that in seven straight tournaments. I think Tony's just in some good form right now. Can he win it? Maybe. If you want to take a sprinkle, maybe. But I think a top twenty bet is a, a really good one to get in the account. Don't hate it. Ball strikers course accuracy matters. Tony Finau's done that. The only hole in his game really this year has been he's been a miserable putter. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't need to be a good putter to have a good or have a good putting week to finish top 20. So I like that as well. Matt, for my last one, a little trivia. Do you remember who mm-hmm. won the FedEx St. Jude last year? Victor Hovland. No. <laughs> Lucas Glover. Yes, Lucas Glover. Lucas Glover. Uh, second question. Do you remember the last time Lucas Glover won before winning the St. Jude last year? Yeah, he had won like... A month before that or whatever. Uh, the before week that. before. Yeah, he yeah, went yeah. back to back. Lucas yeah. freaking Glover went back to back. Yeah. Wyndham Championship, followed it up, winning the FedEx St. Jude. I'm taking a shot that it might happen again. I'm going right back to Aaron Rye after we cashed a miracle outright last week at the Wyndham. Really seen, like, never seen anything like what I saw that, with 
that great at least at least it, yeah at least the victory laps were few and far between on that one at least people realized what a gift that was but hey a, a win is a win is a win but god i feel so bad for grazerman i mean like the win is just staring you right in the face and you go out and you do what me and you might even do you know what i actually played with steven uh last week we didn't even do that last week like, we, we, neither neither one of us even four putted yeah yes neither neither one of us four putted and certainly didn't three putt from three feet like he did and listen, I did have a snowman on the card, but it was on a par five, damn it. Yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was a, that, no, dude, listen, Aaron Rye in my model, fifth overall. So, I mean, like, I, I, I get where you're coming from. First overall in good drive percentage. So, the guy just like, you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't hit the fairway, it's, it ain't going far off the fairway, you know? Yeah, let's just ride the wave. I mean, it's a smaller field, less guys to beat. Obviously, tougher competition than last week, but... Aaron Rye's fourth on the PGA Tour this year in strokes gained total, behind only Scheffler, Xander, and Rory. And despite that, he's still 50-1 to one this week. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you can't tell me that Aaron Rye's got a worse chance to win this tournament than Cameron Young, Tony Finau, Sung right. Jae Im, Justin Thomas, Tom Kim, Victor Hovland, Corey Connors, Russell Henley, Hideki Matsuyama, you can't tell me that at this point, Aaron Rye has a worse chance of winning this tournament than those guys. So I think even though you're asking him to win back to back, listen, go whatever route you want here. You can take a 50 to one on him if you want in the outright, or you can go back to the winner without market that I've been talking about on the show, and you can get 30 to one on him. But he, his ball striking has been impeccable. And if you watched the tournament last week, I can make an argument that that wasn't even Aaron Rye's ceiling week with how many putts he missed inside 20 feet mm -hmm. and several birdie putts inside 10 feet. I actually think he could do better than that putting. And if he does, he's very live to win this tournament this week. Yeah, I am with you 100% on, on that as well. Like I said, fifth overall in my model this week. And so it's... We have this like false, it's like, um, it's the roulette fallacy, right? Where we have the, it, well, it hit red. Yeah, it's going to hit zero it, twice in a row. It right? hit red zero time. It hit red nine times in a row. It has to be black this time. Well, no, it doesn't. It can happen that, that, that red just rolls a million times. You know what I mean? Like it can happen. It's just, it's, it's what it is. So we think like guy won, no way went again. It's like, well, no, I mean, he can. Like, Luke is Glover. Yeah. There's no Luke reason. Glover. There's no reason to think that he can't, you know? So, yeah, I am, uh, I'm with you on that. Uh, my last one is actually a head-to-head -head this week, and it is one in which that, listen, I, I understand Cantlay is starting to play a little bit better. I, I do get it. I understand that. But they put Cantlay in head-to-heads with Hideki Matsuyama this week. If you, look at, if you talk about a course of a guy, so long as Hideki – is hitting fairways, which he's actually done pretty well of late. We know. Name 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 a better ball striker out of the fairway on a positional deal than, than Hideki Matsuyama. Like it's just the, the guy is absolute fire. He is he is, I mean, seriously, ridiculously good. And you look out there, MGM, FanDuel, both have Matsuyama as the dog in this match against Patrick Cantley. So Patrick Cantlay's form, as everybody knows, has been listening to us talk about this. Sure, he has flashed at one tournament uh, over the last six months, but has mainly been ass over the last six months. And so I think wrong guy favorite situation here, Stephen. Like, I mean, I mean, heck, Hideki as the dog um, against uh, Patrick Cantlay in a head to head. Sign me up all day. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I think I think that's extreme recency bias on Patrick Cantlay, maybe a yep. little a course history as well. But the course is a great fit for Hideki. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna laugh if you get Hideki'd this week, and this goes to four rounds, and Hideki, oh my neck, oh my neck, yeah, and he's, he's WD on Saturday. But you know what? That's that's a risk we take every time we look at Hideki. It is, it is. But again, hey, uh, Hideki twelfth overall in my model. I mean, you would have you have to scroll forever to get to Cantlay. I mean, you know, it's just there's just not there's not a good body of work for him. Can't lay all the way down at 33rd. So again, if, if a guy's 12th in my model, the other's 33rd and I'm getting the other guy, I'm getting the guy that much higher as a dog, then yeah, sign me up 
each and every day of the week. Guys, a uh, full preview of the course and everything that goes along with this tournament over at thelines.com. Read John's article, one of the very best in the business out there. We're always talking golf in the Discord, so upper right-hand corner of thelines.com. You can click on that. Join us over there for free. Yes, free 99 if you want to come in and talk golf with us. And, of course, as we head into NFL season, you know that Discord's going to be popping, talking about the NFL and college football as well. For Steven, I'm Matt. Good luck on all your FedEx bets. And if Rye wins again, I will start wearing two gloves on the golf course. See ya.